morning. Good morning. Okay, so we will continue with the phonetics part of the language. Last week we began talking about the structure of natural languages. Before that, you may remember we spoke about design features of natural languages. What are those features? What are those characteristics of language that make them or that makes that make it such a versatile medium of communication? So, that you know all human beings irrespective of their class, caste, gender, creed can communicate their wishes, their fears, their desires, their poetry, their dreams, anything. Okay. Part of the reason is human being, so human languages, natural languages are designed that way. Once we have spoken about that, let us look at the structure. Now, like any other system, like any other natural entity, natural languages are also made of units put together, small to big, very tiny particles coming together to make a block, blocks coming together to make a bigger block, bigger blocks coming together to make still bigger block. You know, like we have in, in the structure of a building, we have bricks. Bricks themselves have been made of clay. Clay itself is made up of you know what tiny molecules and you can go on breaking it as much as you like. So, in the case of speech or human languages, okay, they are made up of speech sounds. Speech sounds come together and make a syllable. In India, we call them akshara, okay, syllables. Syllables come together and make a word. Words come together, make phrases. Phrases come together and make a sentence. Sentences come together and make a discourse. Or we can go from top down. We can start a discourse and start taking things away. You know, after discourse, the smaller unit is sentence. After sentence, the smaller unit is phrase. After phrase, the smaller unit is words. After words, the smaller unit is syllable. After syllable, the, the smaller unit is speech sounds. You can break speech sounds further. Now, fill in the blanks. I will repeat myself. Uh, higher than the speech sounds, what do we have? Syllables. syllables. Higher than syllables, what do we have? Words. words. Higher than words, what do we have? Phrases. phrases. Higher than phrases, what do we have? Sentences. sentences. What Higher than sentences, what do we have? Discourse. Okay. In written language, we have paragraph. In spoken language, we have discourse, you speak on a topic to people at a place, at a time, these things together. There is a social context that is called discourse. I will repeat myself and please answer me. Uh, lower than the discourse, what element do we have? Sentences. sentences. Discourses are made up of sentences. Sentences are made up of phrases. Phrases are made up of words. Words are made up of Syllables. Syllables are made up of speech sounds, right? So, we are now looking at how speech sounds are produced. What is this subject or this science called, which looks at the production of speech sounds? It is called, please remember, articulatory phonetics, right? We are looking at the production of speech sounds. And I told you the other day that all speech sounds are produced because of either air stream going out of your mouth, starting from your lungs or starting elsewhere and going out of your mouth. What is that kind of air stream called? Egressive air stream or they are produced because of air going into your mouth. What is that kind of air stream called? Ingressive air stream, but most sounds in most languages of the world are produced most sounds in most languages of the world are produced with egressive air stream mechanism. Okay. We can produce a variety of sounds, you know, which I told you the other day, we can speak like flies, we can speak like reptiles, we can speak like birds, we can speak like mammals, we can speak in a variety of ways. 
we can produce hisses, buzzes, what else? Bangs and glides, okay? hisses, buzzes, bangs and glides. That because we have very versatile vocal apparatus. What you see is the diagram of the vocal. This is the vocal apparatus. The air starts somewhere here below in the lungs and moves up and you know either goes through the nasal cavity or goes through the oral cavity and we produce speech sounds, correct? This vocal apparatus then interact together and manipulate this you know speech air and we get a variety of different kinds of sounds so that we can produce lots of words, lots of music, lots of quarrels, lots of cooperation and lots of good and bad things. What are the organs of articulation? We looked at the other day. Can you close your eyes and name them please? The organs of articulation that directly participate in the production of speech sounds. It is tongue, teeth, lips, vocal cords, jaws, uvula, Palates, what kind of palates? Hard palate and soft palate, epiglottis, etcetera. Et Some of them are active articulators. Some of them move towards the corresponding passive articulators. What are the active articulators? Lips, jaw, lower jaw, and tongue, and uvula, and vocal cords. Some people say pharynx as well because it can expand and contract, right? These are active articulators. What are the active articulators? Go from uh, the front of the mouth to the back of the mouth, lips, lower jaw, tongue, uvula and vocal cords. Some people also count pharynx. I will repeat myself. This time we will start with vocal cords. What next? What is the next active articulator? After vocal cords? Uvula. After uvula? tongue, after tongue, lower jaw, after lower jaw, lips, okay, in some order, right. These are the active articulators. They move towards their corresponding passive articulators and we get a variety of sounds. So far, so good. Any problem? Please, if you have any questions, if you have not understood something, please come and talk to me. I have also given you references to books. There are plenty of material on the net. You just Google what you do not understand. Yesterday, I had some confusion uh, concerning the design of erytenoid cartilage and I Googled it and I get it immediately and not even a couple of seconds. Okay. You, you are the lucky generation. You know, all you have to do is to uh, ask for it and it is there. You, know, you are all in almost in the Alibaba and the magic cave, right? So, do look up and there also are books. If you cannot find those books, please speak to me, all right? But most of those books are easily available in the central library and elsewhere. I will encourage you to look them up. Finally, today where you stand in the field of humanities, philosophy and sciences, human languages are the next frontier of challenge for all of these fields. How is it? that human beings can understand more than words, <coughs> can understand and put together those words. Can a machine do that? Can we design systems which can speak and answer like human beings, which can ask and process information like human beings? It is not an impossible goal. You know, the, uh, the only claim that engineering makes upon human intellect is that there is nothing like impossible. What is there in nature can be replicated, but this will be the way to replicate, to understand how nature works. This is how nature works. Today, I am going to talk about the functioning of the vocal cords, the most basic if you want, I am not insisting on it. I, 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 you know, I expect you to get this design right, this diagram right. I expect you at the examination, 
uh, you will have a question maybe at the quiz and at the end semester examination as well. I will ask you to draw the diagram of vocal apparatus, level it, name the parts of vocal apparatus, underline the active articulators, etcetera. Please get it right. Okay? Let it be you know a part of your ready knowledge. The moment somebody tells you soft palate, you know what you are talking about. The moment somebody says uvula, you know what you are talking about. Okay? And the best way to do that is to draw this diagram at least 30 times within this week, 3 or 4 times a week, 3 or 4 times a day, I am sorry. Okay? And you will find that until the very old age, you will be able to teach how to draw this diagram to your grandchildren or God willing great grandchildren. Okay? It is it's not difficult at all, provided you give some time to it. Let us move to the next. The structure and working of vocal cords, please write. It can be spelt both with or without an H. Some people also call it vocal folds. Okay? So, I am going to talk about the structure and function of the vocal cords. Vocal cords are located here. You know, take your finger to your throat and you see what in layman's language we call Adam's apple. Okay? We in Indian languages have different kinds of names. Okay, in Sanskrit, you know things like kanta. Okay, so here this this box called glottis houses within the glottis is encased, is 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 placed safely. This organ called vocal cords. Okay, within the glottis. This is the design of the vocal cords. Take a good look. Okay. I have, what I have showed you is a, is a vertical way, but it is not vertical, it is not this way, it is this way. You know. Actually, these are looking sideways, if you look at it you know, from up above in the throat with, with a camera, it, it is, okay. this is the real thing, this is the real thing. Okay. This, the white thing that you see are cords. At the moment, vocal cords are wide open. You know, this is a film, I will play it, I downloaded it from. You are looking at it from top down, you know, with the camera through the throat, right. Just a view, you know, just a very short, very passing view of the vocal cord. This is the most versatile organ of articulation that God or nature has given us. What you saw, the film that you saw has been taken on a camera where the movement has been deliberately slowed. Otherwise, it is so fast. The movement of vocal cords is so rapid that you know, if it is taken at the same speed at which it works, 
you and I will not be able to see it move. Okay. To us, it will appear to be static with naked eye, but you know they have deliberately slowed it, so that we can see how it works. Let us look at the diagram of the vocal cords or even before we, okay. it is it's, it's a it is some kind of a box put within a box. So, glottis itself is a box and within that vocal cords is a box. Look at the design, there are many different parts, there is epiglottis etcetera, etcetera. But the key element, the key element of the vocal cords is this thing, what we call please write. Okay, maybe better I should bring you to this. You see this is epiglottis, I am looking at it from top down and the other side this yellow thing that you see here. Okay. If you someday have time you know and I am going to send these slides to you through Mahesh, you can make your own diagram looking at this, then that will give you a much better understanding of how the system works. Can you see the erytenoid cartilage there? Everybody please, yes or no? Can you see erytenoid cartilage? Mark its spelling, okay. right. Erytenoid is, 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 a, is, a, is a Greek word, you know, it looks like a ladle okay. and in Greek it meant ladle like. It is this thing really which gives you and me, which gives us our peculiar voice this erytenoid cartilage. Please write of all the things you must remember the spelling and the functioning of this. This erytenoid cartilage controls this white thing called vocal cords. If erytenoid cartilage expands, vocal cords expand. If erytenoid cartilage does not expand, vocal cords do not expand. Okay. It is erytenoid cartilage which like a rope on a, which like a you know the controlling rope on a curtain. You see certain sometimes you know you have ropes controlled with curtain particularly in theatres of the old style. Today you have theatres where curtains are electronically controlled, but in the old time we had curtains drawn by the stage manager and he drew the curtains or undrew the curtains through the rope. So, it is this rope you know this tug, can you see the I am pointing the to this yellow thing, okay. this is the erytenoid cartilage. Now, this erytenoid cartilage ordinarily speaking can be erytenoid cartilage generally speaking, but there is nothing like generally in nature. You know each though we are all I have been saying though we are all mass production of God. Okay. We always talk of overcrowded, overpopulation, overcrowded countries, but no two people are alike. Look at yourselves, look at your jaws, look at them you know each other, please do look at each other. <laughs> Please do look at each other. No two jaws are alike, no two eyes are alike, no by alike I mean exactly alike. Unlike a mobile phone, unlike a pair of shoes, unlike a fountain pen, unlike a ballpoint pen, you know, unlike anything that man has made. Nature has mass production, yet each, each piece is custom made each creature is different from another creature. You and I think all bullocks look alike, all dogs look alike, but those who keep bullocks ask the farmers, they know one bullock from another. You and I may have difficulty recognizing twins, but mother has no difficulty recognizing twins. It is not that she feeds the same child twice or keeps the other child hungry. Okay. So, even if everything in nature looks like everything else, it is not. Now, keep that in mind and then let us talk about this. Erytenoid cartilage generally is among men, it is 
21 millimeters and among adult women generally speaking it is 18 millimeters once again generally speaking it could be 17 point something it could be 18 point something it could be 21 point something it could be 20 point something those minuscule differences those nanometer differences give us our unique voice please write vocal cords give us our voice the arytenoid cartilage there gives us our unique voice vocal cords give us all voice you know we will not be able to speak you will not be able to hear me as you do now without the vocal cords but within the vocal cords the moment i speak you recognize it is shri chaudhary speaking or the moment you speak your friends speak you are able to recognize immediately the moment there is a hello on the phone and you recognize who is speaking a friend or a foe a mother or father a relative or a stranger okay and you are able to recognize that uniqueness of voice comes to you from the length of arytenoid cartilage <clears throat> come back to uh, we'll come back to the design of uh, the first let's begin at the beginning vocal cords are some kind of a muscular fiber you know this white thing that i showed you in the diagram these you know these white rope like things these opening attached to the epiglottis on one end and arytenoid cartilage on the other okay this is arytenoid cartilage this is epiglottis okay attached to and then they expand and contract expand and contract the pressure of air coming from inside the lungs or in occasional rare cases pressure of air going from outside through the mouth into the lungs okay forces them to open yet because you know vocal cords have a versatile function yet vocal cords can be either fully open as they are or they can be fully shut okay when you eat when we drink okay generally though in india you know and in many other cultures we talk while eating in that case you know even then vocal cords help us when we talk they let air come out but don't let food particle get in but sometimes when food particles do get in we start choking we start coughing but generally speaking vocal cords were designed to help us perform these functions close the passage this passage so that you know food can pass through trachea but when it is open the wind can pass through the wind pipe the two pipes there in our throat in our you know coming to the glottis right so this is the function that they perform they help us eat they help us speak right they are highly sensitive slightest pressure of air can send them vibrating at extremely high speeds opening closing opening closing some people say they vibrate so rapidly that the maximum recorded speech is something like please note 14000 cycles per second at the rate of opening and closing 14000 times per second it is unimaginable that there can be any uh, part of human body which can work at these speeds okay they almost you know they you know in when you when you take live movie camera picture you almost don't see them you know moving they are so fast so then they artificially slow down the camera and then they take the photographs it's highly sensitive slightest pressure of air can change its rate of vibration from zero cycle no movement at all to 14000 cycles per second the maximum recorded it can vibrate look at the parts of it usually as i said the particular voice the individual voice the unique voice that each of us has is by and large people say the product of the length of the you know this arytenoid cartilage 
in the case of men it is about 21 millimeters long generally speaking adult men in the case of adult women it is about 18 millimeters long children have it of under 18 millimeters length what happens is while we are growing up in the case you know both boys and girls have the same kind of voice in their early childhood but as the boys start getting longer retinoid cartilage and you know as we say voice breaks you know you acquire this protrusion then you know boys go on to about 21 millimeters the art retinoid cartilage grows among boys up to the length of 21 millimeters but in the case of most girls it stays at 18 millimeters that is why men and women get different kinds of voice but you may have you you may perhaps you, you you may possibly know people where men have different kind of voice and women have different kind of voice my favorite is the uh, you know the vocalist usha uthap from calcutta you know she can speak like, she can sing like men she can sing like women and many other people who do these caricatures can also do that so this is adaptable some women have longer vocal cords and they talk like men some men have uh, shorter or a smaller vocal cords and they talk like women can you imitate the voice of a woman can anybody please try and can anybody please try and imitate the voice of a woman i am not doing caricature for you i am trying to say how versatile it is come on please let me see if somebody does it this is where you call guts come please Okay, let me see who does it. You know, let the camera capture you, please. Talk like a woman. Yeah. Come on, please. Somebody in the class, please. Don't you act in plays? You know, in plays many until very recently, or even now in my village. You know, when we have theatre, boys play girls. Okay. Somebody, please. Okay. Let me see if some girl can speak like a boy. Can you speak like a boy? Try. If you are not very hesitant, do try it. You know, classroom is the only place where you can experiment, and failure also teaches you. Come on, try it. Talk like a boy. Sing Janaganman like boys. A hoarse voice. Okay, maybe we'll do it later. Perhaps do it. Try it in your room. You know, all of us can do that, and all of us can do that because we can control through arytenoid <coughs> cartilage the vibration of through flow of air vibration of vocal cords can be controlled okay they can open and close at extremely rapid speeds let's look at sorry okay a, a closer view of the vocal cords there are vocal folds, there are different kinds of cartilages. It is a very complex engineering, very complex mechanism, yet highly versatile, highly dynamic. You know, I, I will immediately, I will tell you in a few minutes about how it works. You know, it also controls esophagus. It is the doorway to the esophagus, which is closed when we swallow something, but open when we speak, right. Okay, let us look at the uh, vibration of the vocal cords once again and I will tell you how it, what functions it does. They, it is the white things that are the vocal cords, the other things is get you know uh, glottis, this side is epiglottis, the other side is far side is arytenoid cartilage. Yes, yeah, it is all inside it, that inside, inside. Pointy thing is where exactly there is picture. Yeah, right, that pointy thing is here. This, this, this is, this is epiglottis and this other side is the arytenoid cartilage. Yeah, this thing, you see this thing is arytenoid cartilage, this ladder like thing. That is why the Greeks call it arytenoid. Oid, oid means shape, eri means ladle.
Okay? Uh, you can, you know, I am going to give you the link and you can download this and many other better, uh, you know, uh, films of the functioning of the vocal cords. The point I am making is that you and I are able to hear each other, that you and I are able to recognize each other by voice, even if you close your eyes, even when you do not see your speaker, you know who is talking to you. Okay? All this happens because of the unique design of the vocal cords. Okay? What else does vocal cord, what else do vocal cords do? Okay? Ah, I would like you to draw this diagram quickly, may not be everything, you know, but use your pencil, take a couple of minutes and draw these three positions as fast as you can. A, B and C. Okay? You do not have to take me in the camera for a few minutes. Lovely, that is great. Can you capture his notebook, please? I thought you would speak like a boy. Do not you play as take a part in stage plays? Mm -hmm. Do it fast. Yeah, that is great. Yeah, that is good. Can you capture my friend's notebook? Have you never acted in plays? No. Too dry now. <laughs> okay. Good. Come to the front, come on quick. Yeah, that is marvelous, that is great. I wish you were sitting in the front so that I could ask my friends to capture your diagram on camera. Have you never acted in plays? Have you never acted in plays? Why do not you talk like a woman? Shy? So, we could have reversed rules today. Okay. Right. Okay. Finished? Okay, please, you know, I will anyway, I am going to uh, mail these slides to you and they will be there on the NPTEL website. You can look them up and there are plenty of these things on the net anyway. Linguists say, phoneticians say that primarily or basically vocal cords can be in one of the three stages. A, where they are fully closed 
when they are fully closed, no speech sound is possible. You know, this happens when you eat or when you drink, etcetera, okay? when you are swallowing something. So, fully closed position A. Position B, fully open, air goes out or comes in freely, okay? as in B, but as in C, it is partly closed or gently closed, so that the passing air, the passing speech air can send it vibrating. All speech sounds are possible, you know, that we are able to hear one another. It is possible because of the vocal cords being in the position C. Okay? When it is in position A, no speech sound is possible. When it is in position B, speech sounds are possible, but people at a distance cannot hear the speaker. Okay? Say for example, I am talking now, but last benches perhaps cannot hear. Can you hear me what I am trying to tell you now? Can you hear me? Maybe you can, but people on the last benches cannot hear me, because vocal cords are not vibrating. This is how we whisper to each other. Keep your finger here and whisper to each other in turns, not at the same time. Okay? Now, keep your finger there and switch the voice on. Say the same thing with voice on. Say it aloud to your friend. Now, do you hear it vibrating? Do you feel it is vibrating? Okay? Another way of doing the same thing is just say produce this sound. No vibration. Now, say do you feel something is vibrating? Okay. So, you know depending on the state of vocal cords, we say number 1 A, it hardly participates in the production of speech sounds. There are some speech sounds in some languages, which are produced through ingressive air stream mechanism and they are speech sound. So, when you produce a sound like click, do it. The vocal cords are in position A. Air does not go in, it rebounds and you hear the sound. Okay. In my village, the farmers produce this sound to drive the cattle okay, or drive the bullock cart, but in Swahili, this is a speech sound. In English, in Cockney English, particularly in this English that is spoken by working class people in London and its suburbs, again this is a speech sound. Okay? So, it depends, but very few, very few speech sounds are possible through A. Most speech sounds are produced when vocal cords are in position either B or please complete C. Please write, when the vocal cords are in position B, we produce voiceless speech sounds. <coughs> vocal cords wide open voiceless sounds. Okay. vocal cords gently together, not tight shut, voiced sounds. Okay. These are the speech sounds. Most speech sounds in most languages of the world are produced when vocal cords are in the position B or C. So, for example, we get s as in sip and z as in zip, because vocal cords are vibrating or not vibrating. Okay? 
So, we get voiced sounds and voiceless sounds because of the vibration or the absence of vibration of the vocal cords. Besides the fact that they carry voice of the speaker to the ears of the listener, they also produce other kinds of sounds. What are the other kinds of sounds? They produce you know different kinds of vibration produces different kinds of waves. Okay? When talking about acoustic phonetics the other day, I told you that each wave, each speech wave has its own characteristics. They have their own formant frequencies, they have their own fundamental frequency, they start vibrating at a certain rate, they terminate at a certain rate. When you saw the, when you know we just now saw the a film of the vocal cords in action and the speaker produces a sound which goes from low to high. See this once you know when this says low to high, just see. This is just one continuous production of sound. You see when we sing, they are not talking about that. This is national anthem of a country. Can you tell which? Right. The, you know, this has been taken as I told you. You can look at the, you know, from a medical research center, their public website, and I just downloaded it from there. You can see more there. They have taken a clipping from American national anthem. They have taken a clipping from people shouting, you know, the low to high. So all of these functions, you know, I have, I have just taken less than a minute. It is a few seconds clipping. You know, I encourage you to spend a few minutes at, you know, this Google website and see how it works, what are the different kinds of functions it does. But one of the most important functions of the vocal cords is to give, you know, it, it makes the speech audible. The second function I said, it produces a tone of voice. Okay. It says, you know, the presenter here said from low to high. Many people say that meaning is not there in words, meaning is there in tone. You can say the same words in a bad tone, right? Somebody asks you for a mobile phone, can I use your mobile phone? And you can say, yes, gladly, by all means. And somebody says, can I use your mobile phone? And you can say, okay. If that person has any self respect, you know, <laughs> any sense of self respect, he would not use your mobile phone or anything. So, you know the meaning some people say is not in words, it is in tone. What is tone? Tone is nothing, please write, but, it, but the rate of change in the vibration of vocal cords. Okay? I will explain myself and then close the class today. Right? What is tone? Tone is nothing, but the rate of change or change in the rate of vibration of the vocal cords. What is tone? Change in the rate of vibration of the vocal cords. Imagine you began speaking at a at the rate of you know vocal cords vibrating at the rate of let us say 1000 cycles per second, 
thousand times closing opening, closing opening, closing opening, uh, but then it uh, start declining. It came to 500, it came to 300, it came to 200. So, you uh, start on high and come to low. This is what happens when you give commands, when you give orders. A parade commander says stand at ease. He starts at a very high rate of vibration, maybe something like 6000 cycles per second and comes to 0. That is when you declare, when you shout. On the other hand, you can start at a very slow rate, very low rate of vibration, you start at 200 cycles per second okay, and go on to high, 1000 cycles per second. Can I borrow your pen please? So, when you, when you ask a question, when you make a request, you know, then you start at a low rate of vibration and move to the high rate of, rate of vibration. So, you know, you can say, can I borrow your pen please? Okay? The, you know, the vocal cords start at a low rate and go at the high rate. So, you can have low to high rising vibration, you can have high to low falling vibration. In other words, you can have falling tone, rising tone, you can have in between, you know lots of in betweens are possible, you can have doubtful tones. Uh, should we call him to the party on Saturday? Well, he is a nice guy, but he gets drunk. Okay. Now, this expresses doubt. So, what is doubt? It begins on a high note, comes to the low note and goes to the high again fall, rise, fall or rise, fall, rise. Okay? Please write. So, you can have depending upon, you can have rising tone. What is rising tone? It starts at a low rate and goes at a, terminates at a high rate. You can start at the rate of, let us say, 300 cycles per second and close at maybe a thousand cycles per second, correct. On the other hand, there can be falling tone. The other way around, you can start at thousand cycles per second and you can close at 300 cycles per second. Usually rising tone is used to make requests, ask polite questions. Can I take this seat please? May I come into the class please? Okay, etcetera, etcetera. Or falling tone is generally used to give orders, make declarations. The king is dead. Tomorrow is a holiday. IIT is the greatest institute. Okay, you can make. Or sometimes you can have fall rise or the counterpart is rise fall. All of these things and various permutations, various combinations are used to express. So, for example, when you have fall rise, it starts at 1000, goes to 300, goes to 1000 cycles per second. When you have rise fall, you start at 300, go to 1000 and start come back to 300 cycles per second. There can be various combinations, a whole lot of permutations and combinations depending upon the kind of thing we said, the voice we used. We can have falling, rising, rising, falling and various kinds of tones. Okay. In other words, vocal cords perform a variety of speech related and social functions, the attitude, the meaning, etcetera, etcetera, the are conveyed through tones and tones are possible because vocal cords vibrate in the particular manner. I will forward these slides to Mahesh, you can look at them again, it is also they are also going to be there on the website of the NPTEL, but do look up books. Thank you, have a good day.